to vote for a sitcom game. You voted for MASH for the Atari 2600. It's a pretty simple game, so to fill the time I'm going to also count down the top 10 episodes of MASH as rated by IMDB users. It's the sixth episode, so hit the theme music. Okay, welcome to another episode. Um, we're going to count down the top ten episodes. I'll cover one maybe every five or six minutes as we go through the hour here. So, let's we'll start with the very first one here. We'll start at the bottom of the uh, top ten list here. Uh, Goodbye Radar, uh, part two specifically. This is um, season 8, episode 5, and has a 8.5 rating on IMDb. And this is actually one of my personal favorite MASH episodes. And this is the part of the series where Gary Berghoff, who plays Radar, leaves the show. And really, until season 8, um, his character it seemed kind of underutilized to me, kind of underdeveloped. Um, even though it's you know one of the most important and iconic MASH characters. But these episodes, he actually did start to really develop a lot of interesting character traits, which is a, sh a shame, because he was just leaving the show. So that's it, number 10, uh, Goodbye Radar. And so now if we go from, from that to the Atari 2600 um, MASH. And this game is um, kind of simple doesn't really have a lot to do with sitcom episodes per se. It's kind of the ephemera around the episode. Um, so, I mean, they didn't put a lot of thought into the storyline for this game, obviously, but there's, there's kind of two parts here. The first part is uh, you're a helicopter and you're flying around Korea picking up uh, wounded soldiers and taking them back to MASH. There's a two-player version for two helicopters here and um, you have to dodge the trees. I'm not sure what the jet's for, um, but the, at the bottom there there's a North Korean tank who's shooting at you from time to time and uh, if you get shot a jeep will come and uh, take your helicopter away and you start over again. And uh, so the idea here is to just uh, watch out for the helicopter, watch out for the trees, pick up wounded, take them back to MASH. And the second part of the game it sort of happens I guess after you pick up enough soldiers, you go to a operating game, which is very similar to Operation, the board game. Um, not exactly the same, but very similar. A very sort of round pear-shaped guy uh, you're operating on, and you have to go in and grab the shrapnel and get it out without touching the sides. If you do touch the side, the game will call you a ferret face. Now this may be confusing to those of you who have never seen MASH or haven't seen MASH in a while, but uh, one of the characters in MASH, Frank Burns, he's kind of the uh, antagonist of the series um, for the first five seasons or something like that. Um, he's a bad surgeon, at least according to uh, the rest of the doctors, and he's kind of a jerk, uh, and he's a really strict military man. but. Um, they give him the, the nickname Ferret Face, I, I assume because he's sort of sniveling, I guess? I don't know. But anyway, if you do a bad job of surgery, you get called Ferret Face. And that's it. So once that's over, you go back to this part and you keep going, and I assume you try for high score. There's actually a couple variations. There's two-player, like I said. There's, a, I think, an easier mode where you have no tank at the bottom and a smaller helicopter. Um, but it's essentially that's that's the game. So let's uh, let's play a little bit of it here. I'll, I'm the uh, blue helicopter. And there's the tank shooting at me. You know I don't I don't really feel like I'm in competition with the yellow helicopter because he's in the same team as me, getting the wounded back to the mash. I take it back to the blue, and that increments a counter, I guess. The top of the screen is my points. 
Um, oh, oh, I just got hit by the tank. Alright. Okay, so no, and then they show up, more show up, back to the mesh, get more guys. And this is pretty much it. Okay, now here's the operation part. So there's the shrapnel. I attach to it. Now I have to get it out without touching the sides. And I just repeat. And the, the heartbeat starts to get faster. Oh, ferret face. All right. <laughs> and that's it. Now I'm back to helicopters again. So at this point, you've pretty much seen everything the game has to offer. I guess I'm full, so i get back. Um, I'm not sure there's really a sort of win state or end game or anything like that. Just a sort of an arcade game. And I'm not really sure what the jet does. The top. I know jets sort of fly over and mash all the time, but the, the show, I mean. Not really important to the lots of the games. Okay, back to surgery. So when you don't have the shrapnel, you can you can have the the clamps go anywhere. Ah, parrot face. <laughs> I was practicing this earlier today and I didn't get any ferret faces. So, ah. So it must be the overwhelming stress of streaming this live has caused me to get two ferret faces now. Um, my wife and I have been watching MASH. All the episodes are available on Netflix now. We've been watching them in chronological order. Um, which is an interesting experience. And maybe I'll talk more about that here after I get trapped a lot of this guy with the really big stomach. Okay, so I don't know if he died or what, but all right. So I'm going to switch back over to um, the, the top 10 countdown here. All right, take a little break. So the next episode, according to IMDb, is an episode called Dear Sigmund, Season 5, Episode 7. And this was an episode that was directed and written by Alan Alda, who played Hawkeye Pierce in, uh, in MASH. And uh, this episode is one of the many... MASH episodes that are narrated and they're usually titled Dear So-and-So, like Dear Dad or uh, Dear Peg and so on and so on. This one's called Dear Sigmund and this one actually focuses on uh, a character named Sidney Friedman who is the uh, army psychologist uh, who's not a regular on MASH but he is a recurring character. He appeared in a handful of episodes. Uh, so it's just him writing a letter, and it just basically recounts all the characters and uh, stuff that's going on in MASH. Um, so this episode was nominated for several Emmys and won an Emmy for directing. So there you go. That's the next episode down. Okay, we'll go back over to the game here. I got a question in chat. Does your copter keep disappearing on your screen? It does not. It could be the flicker of the game... Um, combined with the screen capturing of open broadcast software um, not capturing that correctly. So I um, apologize for that, but you're, you're just really seeing a copter fly around on, on the screen. There's nothing very exciting. So um, just try to use your imagination. <laughs> All right, we'll go back over to MASH here. Let's see if we can't... Uh, so the most I've shrapnel I've got is three pieces. Maybe I can actually, you know, get four. Let's let's shoot for that. I'm still the blue copter. It is flickering a lot, and I invite you, if you're interested in, in the Atari, uh, to read a book called Racing the Beam. See that this kind of game is actually pretty remarkable, given the technology that Atari has in terms of animation and sprites and um, just graphics. Period. I mean, if you if you look at some of the specs, uh, hang on here. Look at some of the specs that uh, Atari has. Uh, it's incredible to me that there's even trees on the screen. 
um, right now. Much less uh, four different sprites and a bullet. Which, uh, by the way, the bullet is actually a uh, built into the hardware. <laughs> it's part of the Atari hardware. Because uh, it was originally designed for Pong. So they just built a, a bullet right into the hardware. A, a, a paddle ball, basically. Okay, time for surgery. Dawn, strange, hairless, frowny man. Ah, oh, darn it. Barret face. You know, as much as is a surgical hospital, they don't really show a lot of the surgery. Um, probably they couldn't in the you know 70s, early 80s television. Um, you know, they're always talking about, oh, there's lots of shrapnel, and they're always throwing bits of shrapnel into pans, making a loud clanking noise. And they talk about a lot of surgery, but they don't actually show much. It may have been budgetary, it may have been content related, who knows. That's two. Three. Four! Ooh, look at that. It doesn't seem like I can get much more than four. It seems pretty... Unlikely. Ah, shot down. See, I rescued two guys on the way, on the way to being shot down. So, what's that about? So anyway, um, we're actually watching uh, MASH on Netflix all the way through, and I gotta say, most of my memories of, of MASH are as sort of you know, a kid watching reruns with my parents or whatever, it was on reruns forever, probably still is in reruns, someplace, but, so I never really got the experience of watching it like, hey, what happened? Is the game over? Or is it just that I reach 999 so I win? So you got the instruction manual for this book and it wasn't really clear on how you win. <laughs> it was just like what you do and it didn't really say like when the game's over or, or what. But I guess I, I guess that means I beat the yellow one. I don't know. Alright, as good as time as any to go back to my list here. Okay, so, uh, number eight, episode called Point of View, season seven, episode ten. So MASH was a very long-running series, eleven seasons, and they did several experimental episodes. This one was filmed from the perspective of a patient for the entire episode. It was a first-person view uh, for, for the whole episode. Now, we see a lot of that in, in games. But you don't really see much of that in TV or movies. I mean, there there's some out there, but it's kind of a unique unique thing that hasn't been tried very much. Um, so this is a highly rated episode, 8.5 on IMDb, on average. Um, just the point of view of a of a soldier who is um, you know wounded, taken by helicopter to Mash, operated on, cared for by the doctors, and you see sort of the events going on. From, from this guy's point of view, you know, you see Klinger coming in with the dress, and that's just crazy from a soldier's perspective, but as regular viewers, we're, we're used to that sort of thing, so. All right. Let's go uh, back to the game. So, uh, we'll start again. So, maybe I'll just keep an eye on the numbers up there and see what they actually mean. So I went from 5 to 07. Whenever I get these guys, my points go up. Now it's 09. Ah! See, now my points didn't go up at the time. I just went to 11. 
Maybe there's only so many guys I can pick up. Maybe that's the game. Okay. So it's like the yellow clock. Ah! The yellow clock's counting down. Ah, darn it. Maybe each of those guys represents. I don't know, someone being operated on? So that's 17. And I'm losing in points. I guess that's points. Whoa. 19. So he still has the lead in guys, I guess. North Koreans really having it out. Okay, back to this. So the yellow clock's ticking down. Ah, darn it! Oh, no. Seems like if you're going to crash, it's best to crash on the far right. The jeep will get you faster. Hey, what are you doing, helicopter? It's my blue tent. Maybe I'll pretend the yellow one is 8063rd, and the blue one's a 4077. Okay. So his is counting down. So mine just doubled from 25 to 50. <sighs> Ferret face again. It really is quite confusing. Okay, so I guess this time I lost because the yellow is 999 and I'm 964. I I don't know. I that that's a good enough measure for me, I guess. Okay, let's go back over. Count down another episode. So number seven is Sometimes You Hear the Bullet. This is from Season 1, Episode 17. This is the first episode where a patient with their opera gun actually dies, believe it or not. Uh, and this is one of the uh, more of the s uh, serious episodes of MASH. You know, MASH is, is a sitcom. It started as a sitcom and it, it remained a sitcom. But it was sort of a dark comedy, always, because it takes place in war, right? Um, but it really started to take a serious turn in later episodes, and, and this is one of the episodes early on that established those roots. Um, also in this episode, good old Frank Burns, who is Ferret Face, um, he puts in for a Purple Heart because he threw his back out. Technically, during the war, he's injured. Uh, he wants a Purple Heart for that injury. So he puts in for it and gets it, and I think they eventually... Hawkeye eventually just steals it and gives it to somebody else who he thinks deserves it. Um, so, uh, good episode, uh, 8.6 on IMDb. I actually have it as 8.5 on there, but I think it's 8.6. All right. Now back over to the game. All right, so so far I guess I've won one and I've lost one. So let's see if I can win this one. Just kind of a little bit odd that I win by picking up more, you know, injured. It's like it's some sort of competition. Oh my goodness! Okay. So far I'm doing pretty good here. Nope. Got me. Nope, got me again. Okay, and now operating room. Not really sure what triggers the operating room yet. Maybe it's just time. Points are lower than his. They're about even. Ah, 
Falls wounded, I guess. Return to the forest host. So there we go. I don't know if you caught this, but when you start up the game, there's actually a pretty good rendering of the uh, mash theme. Suicide is painless. <laughs> How are we doing on time here? 20 minutes? Yeah. We're good. We're on the par here. Get through all 10 episodes. Oh, so back to Netflix. So we're watching it in broadcast order. And it just seems strange to me that for the first couple seasons, the the plots and even the you know just the jokes are so repetitive and recycled. It's hard to believe that that show got any traction, sort of doing the same thing over and over again like that. Um, of course, TV was different back then. Maybe there was, you know, I think I win. Whew. Not, you know, it wasn't reruns. So when I watched MASH and reruns, it was all, you know, out of order. And so you don't see that as much. But this was kind of shocking to me. Okay, back over to the list. So the next one is Deal Me Out, which is season two, episode thirteen. This is an eight point six on IMDb. So if if you watch uh, Star Trek: Next Generation, you know that there's a lot of episodes that sort of starts or feature poker games, and same thing in Mash. Now, poker was a big part of Mash. This episode was completely poker centric. Um, a lot of action takes place away from the poker game, but it's it's the sort of the framing device is that they're all at a poker game and they're getting, you know, taken away, distracted, uh, and then they come back and so on. Uh, John Ritter guest stars in this episode. You know John Ritter from Three's Company and uh, Problem Child and uh, Rules Dating My Teenage Daughter and so on. He guest starred in this episode, very very young looking, and also uh, Alan Arbus, who was Doctor Sidney Freeman, another episode he appeared in. So again, he's not in every episode, but he's in a handful. Uh, our psychiatrist is in this episode as well. So he's going to show up in a, a lot of episodes that are in this uh, top ten list. Okay. Alright, back to this game. So maybe we can try... Um, so there's MASH 3, MASH 4, and there's five, so this one has smaller helicopters, and it's a one player, so why don't we try playing this one? So I don't think the tank actually shoots in this version. And the copters are smaller, like I said, so it's a little, a little easier, I guess. Or maybe that's the idea, just an easier variation. So maybe there's not as much flicker here, those of you who are watching, I don't know. Somehow some, I doubt it. So we're in Netflix up to about, I don't know, season 10 somewhere, so we're almost to the end. Um, and, you know, half the characters are replaced at this point with new actors, new characters. Um, it was a very different show than when it started. It was very, you know, gag and joke oriented early on. And now it, you know, lots of laugh track. And, and now the laugh track's actually pretty, it's still there, but it's pretty, uh, it's not featured nearly as much. And, um, the episodes usually have at least one serious plot, you know, something maudlin. And then, you know, one sort of joking uh, plot or secondary plot. <sighs> Fair face. Um, but, you know, like I said, uh, a lot of the characters that stick around, they get more developed. So early on, Klinger is pretty much just a one-joke character. 
um, you know, he wears a dress, he has, let's get section 8, so on. Um, after Radar leaves, he becomes, so, you know, he doesn't wear women's clothing nearly as much. Um, and he sort of stops the section 8 attempts. And it becomes more of a well-rounded character. They focus on his... Uh oh, so I won that one, too. All right. <coughs> they focus on his uh, family and his uh, heritage and, and so on. Okay, next episode. This one is Welcome to Korea, Season 4, the premiere, Episode 1. This is the first episode featuring the character BJ Honeycutt. And he's brought in as a replacement for Trapper John. And it sort of establishes BJ as kind of a Trapper replacement. He's basically just the same character, kind of, dropped in to replace Trapper. Um, but like I said, later on, the character diverges from that, um, becomes a lot more complex. You know, he's still jokey and, and fun and humorous, but he be he's, got, he's a family man, and he's a much more serious doctor than, than Trapper. This episode also is the introduction of uh, Colonel Potter as the new CO in Season 4, uh, Episode 1. This is an 8.6 on the IMDb average. Uh, so we have four episodes remaining and about a half an hour left of gameplay. So just a quick word on the poll here. There's a lot of votes in this episode's poll, um, Home Improvement got a lot of votes, which I'm so glad it didn't win because it is a terrible game. Even, you know, it's a bigger game than MASH, but it's just terrible. Adam's Family got a lot of votes, but not quite enough. I mean, that could have been interesting. There are some really good Adam's Family games, and there are some really bad Adam's, Adam's Family games. Um, I think the Three Stooges got a vote. Gilligan's Island surprisingly got zero votes. It's such a weird NES game. I, you know, I've always wanted to sort of sit down and play it, but I, I know it's not very good. So, um, I don't know. It's just a weird to get any votes. No Gilligan's Island fans out there, huh? Okay. Back over to Mash. Let's see. So the even numbers are two-player games. So what else we got? What's this one? Three. Now the manual says, but I forget what three and four are. Five and six. We already played that one. Okay, let's do seven. Maybe this is just a head-to-head -head, uh, surgery game. I see. And maybe I'm competing against yellow. So a hypothetical uh, yellow player is also doing surgery at the same time. So, you know, this is actually not bad. Um, you know, if you want to, you know, if you like Operation and you want to play a TV version of it, I don't think I'd pay full video game price for this. But, you know, a kid in the uh, early 80s with an Atari could have some fun with this. a weird shaped guy though. She's got like this, he's this, this huge pear shape. Completely featureless except for his mustache and wide nose. No hair, no clothing. So this is just the surgery portion of the game. That ding sound is maybe the shrapnel being thrown in the little metal bowl like in the series. Ah, oh, fair face. So I'm not sure what punishment that gives you in this game option. Alright. So I'm pretty sure at this point that 999 represents a win. So that's uh, something I've learned. Alright, what else we got? 
Let's go to three. What's what variant is this? Oh, I remember. Okay, now I remember this from the book. These are. This is the Colonel Potter option of the game, I guess. I'm not sure why it's Colonel Potter. But uh, these are paratrooping medics. They're being dropped out of a jet, and you have to catch them. <laughs> I'm not sure why you're catching them in a helicopter. Um, it seems dangerous. And now we go to operation again. Okay, more paratrooping medics. So, I have, I have no idea whether this would be fun for two players or not. I don't really have a sense of that. Or if it would be more fun for two players. You know, I guess if you're really into MASH, or two of you are really into MASH, I don't know. And I'm using a gamepad for this. I have a feeling that with the standard Atari joystick, this operation game would be really, really challenging and frustrating. Um, this part not so much. Okay, and I win by a large margin. Good for me. I'm going to add MASH Atari 2600 Expert to my uh, CV. All right, back over to our countdown. Number four is Lifetime. Here is another experimental episode for MASH. So long before Jack Bauer ever came around to do 24, MASH did a real-time episode, you know, much like the real-time uh, 24 premise. So a severely wounded soldier uh, comes to the unit on a helicopter, and he must be treated in less than 20 minutes in order to uh, I don't know, present, prevent brain damage, save his life, that sort of thing. So once they say that in the episode, they say, oh, we got to get him into surgery and do so-and-so operation within 20 minutes. And that, that moment, a little clock appears on the screen right about here, a little clock graphic, and it starts ticking down in real time <clears throat> while the episode's going on. So... Um, you know, it's it's got a it's got a real sense of hey, this is actually happening right now, not over the course of a week or two weeks, but it's it's a little brief snapshot. Um, this episode was also directed by Alan Alda, and who he co-wrote it with uh, with a real doctor, Doctor Walter Deschel, who did a lot of uh, writing, um, consulting for medical shows like like Mash and and Trapper John and so on. So, that's uh, another innovative episode that sort of MASH took a risk with, and uh, it turned out, to turned out to okay. It, it has a, uh, I think I messed up my PowerPoint there. They all say 8.5, but this one is a uh, 8.6 on IMDb. So, let me go back over here. I'm going to fix this PowerPoint to have the correct numbers on it. Uh, you can watch these graphics for a quick second here. I'll fix it for at least the top, the top four, or the top uh, three. All right. So we've played all the games of Mash here, and uh, you know, I think this Operation Party is my favorite one so far. So let's play another round of this. I could see this kind of game being on the on an Android or iOS phone game for you know like 99 cents or something, or like a flash game. But can you imagine paying 30, 40 bucks for this, or even 20 bucks for this in the early 80s? And uh, you know, 
It's probably not as much of a stretch as you think. I mean, state of the art back then wasn't nearly what it is now. But again, I bet this was really frustrating without with the default Atari controller. There, there are some, there's a lot of Atari joysticks out there, third party and otherwise. Um, I don't think they ever made anything like a gamepad though. This could be very difficult with a real controller. Maybe I'll try that someday. Is actually get the mash cart and try it with an Atari joystick and see if the experience is any different. You know, I guess the difficulty against the computer isn't terribly high. Maybe there's an option to up the difficulty. I remember reading something about that in the uh, instruction manual. But I, w I would say that might be one thing that playing against a live person might give you is a little more difficulty. Not that I'm suggesting you waste your time tracking down MASH and another person who's willing to play it with you. But I'm just thinking back to the uh, to the early '80s. Okay, let's go back to Mash One here. Let's play this again. Full size copters and tank firing at me. The jet up there not really doing anything. Um, functional might just be a again, sort of a quirky thing that they had to do on the 2600. Like, you have to have the jet up there on every screen or on no screen. Something like that. Ah, shut down. No ferret face, no ferret face. Ah, there's a ferret face. Oh, I'm full of wounded. I gotta go back. There we go. There was an episode of MASH that focused on one of the copter pilots. He was trying to set a record for the most number of consecutive runs or something. And they had to ground him. Ooh, look at that skill. Ah. Um, because he was diabetic or something. That's pretty much, I mean, choppers are a big part of the show because it's like, oh, incoming wounded. Another win. But it's not like you fly around in choppers very much in the show. Okay, so we're about 40 minutes. I got about three episodes left to run down, so let's do one more. Okay, next one is Tuttle, another season one episode. So, and this this is kind of an off the wall episode. Um, Hawkeye, Hawkeye Pierce, he brings his childhood imaginary friend, who he called Tuttle. Uh, he sort of brings him to life, uh, invents him as a captain in the army. And he does this in order to. Uh, fill out some paperwork and get extra supplies for Captain Tuttle, which he ends up just giving to the uh, the orphanage uh, for Father Father Mulcahy. But due to some circumstances and people overhearing and um, you know wackiness ensues, and soon everybody in the camp is convinced that Tuttle really exists and that he's some sort of amazing heroic, uh, you know, great guy that everyone wants to 
uh, talk about, and everyone acts like they've met him. Um, so, uh, and eventually he has to kill off Tuttle or, or get rid of him or something like that. But it's it's sort of a, a, a funny episode, lighthearted, just also kind of bizarre um, episode. So that is number three, IMDb rating of 8.7. All right, so back to the game. You're starting to see why I decided to put that top ten list in here. I'm not sure an hour of watching blocky helicopters move around is riveting watching. So I thought I'd break up the monotony with a little something. So, uh, one thing we noticed watching through all the MASH episodes is, is uh, which probably should be no surprise, but there's a lot of uh, well-known actors that appear as sort of one-offs or um, side characters. And they're probably relatively unknown at the time, like where I mentioned John Ritter. Um, another one we saw recently was Lawrence Fishburne. And I almost wasn't sure. It was Lawrence Fishburne. He looked uh, so young and, and different. Um, but he had his uh, characteristic teeth and, and look about him. He was actually credited as um, Larry Fishburne in the credits of the episode. So at one point he went by Larry instead of Lawrence. Lawrence sounds more dignified. He probably got uh, or higher was able to get higher paying uh, gigs if he billed as Lawrence instead of Larry. Um, but that, that was an episode that was focused on uh, uh, racism in uh, a certain division of the military, or of the army. He was in it. Um, let's see, who else? Who else have I seen in there? Oh, I'm sure it'll come to me, but... You know, if you, if you decide to watch MASH, it's, you'll see a lot of them. It's, you know, it's an okay show. It, it holds up for the most part, except, like I said, those first few episodes where the jokes and plot lines get really, really repetitive. And you're almost looking at, at the Netflix like, didn't we watch this one already? Because it's nearly identical. Um... But the, the, the later seasons, I'd say right around the time that uh, Frank Burns leaves, the show really starts to get a different sort of tone about it. All right. Oh, is it a tie? Is that what happened? Is that possible? I don't know. I'm not really sure. All right. Let's do... Um, let's do... Uh, parachuting medics. Oh, crash. Catching with a helicopter. Probably not the best thing to catch people with. Something with spinning blades of death. Oh, just jump into the helicopter. Not a tactic I would advise. Also, no need to parachute medic safe. It's uh not necessary. Just just drive them in. I don't know if they did much parachuting in the in uh Korea. Maybe they did, I don't know. Oh my goodness, it's going crazy up there. doing so good. This is Jet's story, huh? Sort of randomly moving? Oh! Come on, let's hurry it up. Okay. 
this time just missed it okay we're at the 45 minute mark so let's break out another episode and this is going to be the number two highest rated mashed episode according to IMDB user ratings Adam's ribs so one of the most common gags used in the show, one of the running jokes, I guess, is how horrible the food in the mess tent is. Um, Radar is kind of the exception. He eats a whole ton of food when he goes there. But everyone hates the food. They're always talking about powdered eggs and, um, you know, just, just terrible food. So... In this episode, Hawkeye finally snaps. He's finally had enough of the terrible food. And he just has a hankering for barbecue ribs. Barbecue spare ribs. So, of course, they don't really ship those to the soldiers uh, near the front line of South Korea. So he has to go through a bunch of hoops to try to get them shipped over. From a place in Chicago, I guess. To uh, Seoul and then to the 4077. And he eventually succeeds at doing this, but of course, um, unfortunately, the tragedy is he doesn't actually get to eat the ribs. Um, because uh, wounded come in right as he's about to dig in. The wounded are, f are flying in uh, from the front lines. So he has to leave the ribs there to get cold. And, and they typically spend uh, 10 to tw 20 hours in surgery, so the ribs go bad. Another comment, MASH on Atari is not something you can endorse on LinkedIn. Um, is that true? I bet you can. Um, please don't endorse me for, for MASH on Atari and LinkedIn. Or, or do, who cares really. No one looks at LinkedIn. You can probably endorse me for, uh, for Atari on LinkedIn. Or something like that, I don't know. All right, so we have one episode left. Anybody who's probably ever heard of MASH probably knows which episode is number one. But we'll leave that for the end of the show. All right, let's go back to the tiny copters. So, um, in case you weren't aware, the uh, MASH series is loosely based on the MASH m movie. There was a film first, called MASH. Um, and some of the same actors were in the TV show as were in the movie. Uh, Radar, mainly. He played Radar in both the, the movie and the TV series. Um, but, um, let's see, I think one of the Sutherlands was in the movie, and, um, oh, jeez. Another really well-known actor played, uh, Frank Burns. And it's, it's a shame that I can't remember his name. Uh, I want to say, oh, shoot. I don't know, look it up, kids. Um. It's an okay movie. It's uh, much more of a sort of a, a uh, satire uh, film, but also kind of a. Uh, I mean, the TV series was very satirical as well, but. Um, oh, man, fair face. And it was it was sort of a more. Um, I don't know, screwball comedy slash satire movie. And the, the movie is actually based on a book. Or a series of books, anyway. 
And um, there's actually a few spin-offs of the MASH TV series as well. One of them was After MASH, which um, was not well received. I won! Alright. And there was, um, let's see, there was Trapper John MD, which I, I think was a spinoff of MASH. A different actor played Trapper John, though. There was a uh, radar spinoff called Walter, which I don't think was picked up. But they did at least make one episode of it. I'm off random mass trivia now. up some ground in the surgery. Oh! Tried to rush that last one. Episodes of MASH I remember as a, as a kid, I just thought was funny, was an episode where, I think it was Klinger, he, uh, he was trying to get a Section 8, he was always coming up with new schemes, and so one of the things he tried was he actually was going to eat a Jeep, ah, I win, he was going to eat a Jeep, piece by piece. Which um, I think would probably kill you when you start eating a first few nuts and bolts or something. Um, but I thought that I always thought that was funny, you know, uh, actually trying to eat a, a car. I thought it was the silliest thing as a kid. And I don't actually. I think we, my wife, want to, want to watch that one without me on Netflix. I go back and watch that again, see if it holds up. All right. Was I not showing the screen this whole time? I was playing MASH? Oh boy. Anyway, back to finish off the PowerPoint here. Sorry, I wasn't showing you the game. Anyway, uh, number one episode of MASH, according to IMDb user rating, is Abyssinia Henry. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. Season 3, episode 24. This is the season 3 finale. Uh, of course, you guys have probably heard of this one. This is the last appearance of Colonel Blake, played by, um, oh, I don't remember what his name was, um, the actor. He also was on Match Game. I don't know why I know that. Anyway, this is the last appearance of Colonel Blake. It's probably the most famous episode of MASH, um, next to the series finale. And it has a twist ending that's been parodied and homaged many many times besides Colonel Blake it was also the last appearance of Wayne Rogers as Trapper John after this he's uh, discharged and and sent home in the season 4 premiere the name of the episode by the way is a play on words for I'll be seeing ya but uh, Abyssinia uh, is I guess a name of uh, a country that is now called Ethiopia, something like that. So, anyway, it's just sort of a, a, a play on words there. Abyssinia, Henry. I'll be seeing you, Henry. So there you go. Top 10 MASH episodes. That one is rated a 9.1, and it's typically featured in like, oh, the top 10 sitcom episodes of all time, um, that sort of thing. But this is the 
user-rated best episode of MASH. So there you have it. Now we'll go back to the game here. Sorry, I meant to do this before. Oh, let's see. Let's play some MASH 1 to finish up this hour. So I want to say thank you for joining me for another episode of MSTCX. Um, Thanksgiving's coming up soon, so I thought I would try a Thanksgiving-themed episode. It was difficult finding uh, games that relate to Thanksgiving in any way. Um, but I came up with a few. I'll send out a poll for this. Maybe I'll even just mention them here uh, before I stop streaming. But there's no Thanksgiving game themed games that I could find. Any retro games, anyway. So I decided to say, oh, well, you know, what are... What are some of the things we do on Thanksgiving, or Thanksgiving traditions, and find a game that roughly relates to that. And, uh... Not many of the games that I came up with are very good. For instance, um, you know, a big Thanksgiving tradition is football. So I found a couple of lousy football games to play. So it doesn't matter to me, because even a good football game I'd be terrible at. I never could really grasp uh, football as a player, uh, even as a fan to some extent. Uh, certainly not in video games. I just never really understood like the fundamentals of how to call play, how to look for pass receivers, and all that stuff. It never really clicked with me. So, but I picked out some some really terrible football games, at least according to sources on the internet. Um, I also Joust was suggested because you're basically riding around on on giant turkeys. So I'll put Joust in there, and Joust is a pretty simple game. So maybe we'll do a couple variations of Joust, like Joust for 2600, Joust for NES, arcade Joust, uh, or whatever. I don't know. I win! Okay. Um, let's bring up the whole list here, and I'll just tell you what it is, since I've got about three minutes left. Um, in the episode. Okay, so, I came up with um, a football game. Uh, one of them for Genesis that's supposed to be really bad is called Super High Impact. It's a football game, it's, but it's called Super High Impact. That's on Genesis. Genesis, of course, the home of a lot of sports games, a lot of good sports games at the time. This one is one of the bad ones, so we're playing that one. Another football game is just football for Atari 2600. Um, I, I think I have a couple copies of this, maybe, maybe three or four copies of this game. Very common game for Atari. We'll, uh, I never really was into football, so I didn't play it that much, but we'll give it a try if you guys vote for it. So, um, Thanksgiving is all about um, far farming and harvesting, and so I thought, oh, I'll throw a Harvest Moon on there for SNES. Not a game that I will even come close to scratching the surface of in an hour, but if you guys want me to play that, I will. I also thought about Turkey, of course, so I mentioned Joust be a turkey themed game. Uh, also Jordan versus Bird one-on-one -on -one for NES. Kind of a stretch because it's bird. Turkey is a bird. Mm. Anyway, I always like that game, J Jordan versus Bird, so maybe we'll play that one. And the last one is I thought of all the dishes that you serve at Thanksgiving traditionally and the only one that even came close that I could think of anyway was uh, uh, a game called Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which is a Genesis sort of falling puzzle game. Uh, I think it's kind of like Poyo Poyo uh, or something like that, or Columns or something like that. Anyway, uh, Green Beans, Thanksgiving, so Mean Bean Machine was my um, idea there. Another comment just came in, this is not home improvement. No, it's not, because um, MASH is the game that uh, won in the survey. So, 
sorry. If you want home improvement, maybe it'll be on a future poll. Um, the, the games that get votes, I keep them on a list, and I'll make a poll of sort of second chance games sometime in the future. Anyway, so that's the six games that I have for Thanksgiving. I'll put out a poll for those. Look for those on Twitter. Up here, you'll see my Twitter is mgroves. You can also leave a comment here on YouTube um, or, um, I don't know, however Twitch works. Send me a Twitch message or something. Or follow me on Twitch, on Boohiss, on the Twitch. So that's all. Signing off for MASH. Remember, suicide is painless. It brings on many changes. And I can take or leave it if I please. So long, everybody.